Well guys, how's it going? My name is Darren and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the rogue changes. They are actually updating things for patch 725 and I'm pretty excited to show you. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the assassination, which is very minor, and outlaw. And we're going to mostly focus on the outlaw changes from the design of Roll the Bones, Slice and Dice, and its aspects for PvP. I'm going to make a separate video for subtlety because there's a splew of changes they're redoing the whole spec altogether nothing crazy like adding poisons back to weapons but they are changing shadow strike they're giving you two shadow steps they're making your shadow dance a burst ability or a sustainability so a lot of cool shit is coming out later down the line so be sure to follow the channel if you want to see that now i want to first start off with assassination rogues because this one's going to be quick so if you're somebody who is playing assassination and you kind of just want to get your updates out of the way i just want to get that first there's only two, one for Exsanguinate, and both of them are for Exsanguinate, actually. The Exsanguinate change is it now costs 20 energy, but they didn't increase how fast your bleeds happen. So nothing major happened for Assass so far. They are talking about taking out Agonizing Poison and putting back focus between poisons and bleeds for Assass. So everything you see right here, this is just minor first adaptations. One of the things they did for Exsanguinate, they added it a 10, 20 energy uh, add-on for the ability. Now, a lot of you guys might look at it and say that, okay, why, this ability, nobody really ever uses it, and now you're throwing in 20 energy for only 25% faster for bleeds. Now, I think for ability like Exsanguinate, adding on an energy cost to it is actually a good idea because this ability refunds you bleeds and energy back either way. So, as you know, assassination works the way it does is with Venomous Wounds, every time you have a bleed taken on a person that is poisoned, you get 10 energy. So if you throw down internal bleeding, garrote, and rupture with Exsanguinate, you get a lot more damage out on uh, the enemy as it happens faster. You get an energy back, so to have it cost energy basically means you can make this ability stronger. I'm hoping to see more updates to this, and I'm hoping they buff Exsanguinate in terms of the, the damage. I actually would be fine if they added the damage increase for your bleeds while they happen with Exsanguinate. And I'm hoping they do some with Agonizing Poison, like for example, remove it. So hopefully we'll see some like that. Anyway, if you want to see a sass, that's all you got. Now for the big one is the outlaw changes. And at first I want to go over everything that has to do with outlaw. Go over through it, then cover roll the bone separately, cover slice and dice separately, then talk about it in PvP aspect. So regarding outlaw, we have, first of all, developers note. And the more developer knows Blizzard can put out, the better, because then at least they can explain what the thought process is regarding changes to outlaw. And as this is my favorite spec, hopefully they don't F it up. Let's start reading. Uh, our overall goal is here to include smoothing out energy regeneration and reducing the frequency of both resource drought and energy capping. One of the things Outlaw does kind of play, what, one of the things that plague Outlaw Rogues is when you pop in a drone rush, you have way too much energy coming in. So for both PvE and PvP, you can never get rid of it. But when you don't have a drone rush available, you can never get enough energy and it feels like the spec is so slow in terms of your common point building. So Blizzard is trying to alleviate that by making a drone rush not quite as potent and by making it 50% energy regen but 20 seconds longer. Now this isn't a nerf, so it might look like a nerf, oh you don't get as much energy. They are changing it through the passives. Common potency got changed completely, your offhand attacks have a 36% chance to generate 10 energy. It used to be 15 energy, but the percentage chance for your offhand attacks is now 36. Granted, you should know that with mastery, your mastery is your main hand attacks have a chance to make your offhand attacks deal a lot of physical damage. So not only are you auto attacking with offhand attacks, your mastery can proc offhand attacks. And with all so many offhand attacks, you have a chance to generate more energy. You generate more frequently, but the energy you generate is less. So it's supposed to smooth out the playing field. On top of it, they also changed a few traits. First of all, fortune strikes. Your offhand attacks have a chance to increase uh, or to trigger the common potency. So your fortune strikes now adds to that chance, which is good because then you basically are going to have a lot more smoothing out based on offhand attacks and mastery kind of makes up for it. Uh, Fadebringer also, I believe, changed the wording. Reduce the cost of finishing moves by four energy. So that four energy is roll the bones between the eyes run through so basically every single one that was there just i believe that was a grammatical change and to finish it off we have a developer note the net results of the two combat potency of fortune strike changes is that combat potency should generate half as much energy twice as often which is something i said earlier so hopefully this smooths out the spec i'll do further testing on this down the line now here's the change for roll of the bones and this change i'm going to preface with a passive that was added back to the spec and this is something we saw back in warlord general last time 
Restless Blades, which is a passive, has returned to the spec. Your finish moves reduce the remaining cooldown of Adrenaline Rush between the eyes, Sprint, Grapple, and Hook Candle Barge, Killing Spree, Mark for Death, Death from Above, and Vanish by half a second per comp point. And this is something I talked about before. They did nerf your True Bearing, so then this isn't overpowered, so then you would have 2.5 seconds cooldown reduction per finisher, uh, per comp point invest into a finisher. But now let's talk a bit about Roll the Bones because that's kind of where it segues towards. Roll the Bones got a lot of changes for the buffs, and specific buffs are Broadsides, Bird Treasure, Track of Festive Waters, and True Bearing. Developer note before we read the buffs. The distribution of the number of buffs you get from Roll the Bones has changed. On average, you will get fewer buffs. The goal priority is to significantly reduce the desire to frequently recast Roll the Bones when you get one buff. And this is something that people wanted for a while, when you cast Roll the Bones and you get a bad buff, you want to just re-roll, 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 and Blizzard kind of wants to give you less of an excuse to do so by making all the buffs viable in one way or another. Restless Blades does allow you to do so because you do have the, uh, the cooldown reduction aspect of the spec no matter which buff you get, but they also buffed some of the other buffs. Broadsides now also increase the damage of your common point generating abilities by 20%, as well as giving you an extra common point. Which is awesome. Saber slashes and pistol shots doing a lot more damage in general. More sustained damage. Buried treasure got buffed from 25% energy regen to 30. Also buffed. Shark Professor Waters got nerfed. It went from a 25% crit increase to a 20, which isn't bad. A lot of people are going to look at this as a nerf, but the 5% difference isn't going to be as bad as Shark Professor Waters was already buffed that was ahead. So this is to curb it a little bit to make it with the rest of the other buffs. And the last one, which I find controversial, True Bearing causes finishing moves to reduce the cooldown of many abilities by 1 second instead of 2 per common point. So with True Bearing, you are able to reduce your cooldowns by 1.5 seconds per combo point. Now, this was going to have ramifications for PvP, but I'll talk about it after discussing Slice and Dice. Slice and Dice got a few updates and I first need to go inside a building in order to change the spec. Slice and Dice got changed with the changes to Comet Potency, so now it increases your auto attack speed by 80% instead of 100, which I guess means that you will have not as much energy influx or chances for energy influx, makes for a much smoother rotation. It also added your energy regen to be 20% instead of 15. After trying out Slice and Dice for myself, it actually felt pretty good to play. Honestly, the energy regen that you get uh, is a lot more steadier. You get to use a lot more abilities in the long run, with your common potency proccing a lot more often. And the auto attack speed of 80% does seem to be competitive to the alternative overall the bones. As you can see, I'm just hitting a train dummy. Don't look at the numbers, but rather in the energy regen and the common point regen, it feels pretty smooth. I don't feel like I have phases where I'm just not dealing any damage. And this is without a drone rush. And a drone rush doesn't feel as overpowering either. You don't feel like you just have too much energy and not enough global cooldown to spend all the combo points that you're getting. So in the long run, I think they actually did a pretty good job. At least it was slice and dice and it's possible viability for the future. Now if slice and dice feels as good, I can bet without even testing right now, and I'll do tests later down the line, that Mark for Death will feel just fine. And this is the important part right here. This is the question that I had. How is this going to affect PvP? Will they change the true bearing being only one second, while we do get Restless Blades, True Bearing, and the fact that True Bearing is an ability that has a 20 second cooldown means in PvP that if you get the right buffs, like I just got True Bearing, the 20 second cooldown would incur once you use Between the Eyes at full comp points, but then you have to spend 6 comp point Saber Slash with your artifact weapon, generate 6 comp points, run through, would give you back your Between the Eyes a little bit faster. The idea is, after you incur the 20 second cooldown, you have to shred through a few combo points to get between the eyes back. So for PvP, you're able to combo between the eyes into between the eyes into between the eyes. And that takes a little bit of practice and having your cooldowns available like Mark for Death and your artifact weapon in order to accomplish this. So the idea was this new changes to your true bearing and the addition of Restless Blades, which bears a nerf to true bearing, means you will have less stuns. You won't be able to combo stun into a stun. Outlaw Rogue will be less viable for PvP. But after testing this, and if I can uh, eventually get True Bearing back, it's actually not as bad as it seems. Something that they did with Blizzard, and I'm not sure if this is something that's currently on live servers or not, but once you have True Bearing available and your Wrestle's Base is currently available, I'm gonna get a 6 comp point between the eyes, 
Why is the cooldown? It's supposed to be 20. It's 11. So that means if you get 6 common points back, let's say with your artifact weapon off of a trained dummy, and then you use a run through, then the next Saber Slash, if it has artifact weapon, next time you fill up your common points, you'll be able to use your ability. The idea was, once you incur a 20 second cooldown between the eyes, you're not going to be able to use it as often, you won't be able to chain CC back to back in PvP, Outlaw Rogue will be less viable. But in the end, what it comes down to is, Outlaw Rogues actually don't feel less viable. As you can see, I'm able to stun the enemy if I need to, but I still have plenty of time between stuns to chain my run-throughs. I'm not sure exactly what Blizzard did in terms of true bearing and how it functions, but it seems that true bearing and all aspects of cooldown reduction take effect as soon as you use the ability. So for Between the Eyes, it's almost like the cooldown occurs, but then because you're using the ability as a finisher, it shortens, it shortens itself off. So then instead of having to deal with 20 seconds worth of a cooldown, you deal between 10 and 11. So it's somewhat better for PvP. I'm not for sure exactly how to explain the math, uh, I'll try to add some kind of visual cue on the screen, but that's really about all I got for you as of moment. So, in the long run, Outlaw Rogue has more energy, steadier energy, not as overpowering in terms of your cooldowns that give you energy. Roll the Bones got redefined, they're going to be tweaking it down the line. Slice and Dice might be a viable alternative for PvE, not sure about PvP. And Wrestle's Blades and True Bearing still is going to be viable for PvP. So overall, I would have to say the Outlaw Rogue changes have been so far successful. But this is all subject to change since this is PTR. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about all the changes that you saw on this video. Let me know everything that you think about the changes happening to Outlaw. Not as much as Assassination because that's very low. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all of you in the next video.